so my first my first off season, I had some certain goals um, as far as like you know make sure my body's you know refreshed, recouped. But this off season is gonna be way different. This off season, I got I have more like certain things I want to work on. Last off season, it was like you know let's just do everything. Not that like that's not the you know the same mentality, but it's like okay, I need to have better hips. I need to work on my mobi- my mobility a lot more. And everything everything baseball wise, I can take care of that. You know when it's, when it comes to January and. If I can't fix anything baseball wise in a month and a half, probably shouldn't be here anyway. So I think like, you know, I want to get bigger and stronger, but I think the main point this off season is going to be mobility. And last year was like, I want to get faster. I want to get stronger. You know, it was, I wanted to do everything and um, you can't just do that. So it was, it was a lot of, I put a lot on my own plate last, last off season. My emotional development, maturity, coming through after, after high school, you have to change quick. You have to go from being a high school kid to now a professional ball player, and then you're looked at as you have a job. Here's a one and one. Swung on, fly ball left field, hit well. Booker going back, still chasing. It's going to be a two run home run. Jamai Jones having himself a series. I was 17 when I was drafted, 17 in my first professional season, and the things that you have to learn at that age, at that time, when given the opportunity, you have to adapt quick. You have to be able to go with the flow and be a quote-unquote man when it comes to certain decisions on who you're going to hang out with, who you're going to say yes to, who you're going to eat with, who you're going to be around at the field. Are you going to put in extra work? Are you going to get your lift in? And I had to get in a routine of something that I had to think about what is best for, for myself and what is best for the organization. At 17, just had the mindset of, I want to get a little bit better every day, regardless if it's 1% better, a half percent, if I move an inch forward every single day, it will ultimately lead me to the progress and the, the growth that I wanted to see by the time it's ready for me to get the call to, to play for the, the LA Angels or whatever team it may be out of the 30 teams. You know, you always find someone that's, that's older than you guys on rehab and several guys that had been in the bigs or had been up and down, double A, triple A. If you're willing to ask, they're gonna help. I mean, there were several pitchers that I ran into through my years coming up. I mean, several guys. Andrew Heaney came down. I, I was able to talk to Heaney for a while. Skaggs, when when he was down on rehab and everything, I faced him several times and was I mean, able to build a really good relationship with him coming up. Two full seasons. Tyler Skaggs has thrown the ball very well in his rehab assignment, especially of late. He was one of those guys, again, that just an open book. Anytime you wanted to talk to him, he wanted to learn something, he wanted to ask you how he looked, how he how this come out of his hand, or he, you ask him, how are you trying to set me up? What did you see? You can learn so much from one person in such a short amount of time that that could ultimately be the one thing that you need to learn before you get to the big leagues. So now, I mean, I walk up to everybody. I'm introducing myself. Hey, man, how's it going? Saying what's up to all coaches, people, and, and everything just to ultimately form a relationship. And I think that's what, what the biggest difference is, is I've grown as not only a a player but as a person just being able to be myself and the angels have set a platform for me to do that for me to be exactly who i want to be yeah i've always like bounced those thoughts around in my head like the the thought of like oh guys that were drafted in your draft class are already up there guys that are younger than you are already up there like why aren't you up there and it's like i'm fully confident that i could have made it up to the big leagues this year had i performed but um you know like i've i've made those comparisons in my head and that's like a super tough like thing to swallow is guys like already being up there and you know performing in the show but you know my time will come everybody's road to the show is a little bit different and, you know you know mine's mine's no different so that's just how i'm taking it I still have a lot of growing up to do anyways. So like, I don't need to like, I think I told you all this earlier, like I don't need to be on like any specific time frame. Like when it's my time, it's my time. Like it's it's frustrating to know that there's guys that like you played with in high school that are already up there, but like, you know, they just, they, they advanced quicker than you and that's fine. Like I had a quick advancement like when I first got into pro ball and it's kind of like been a little bit static since then. But dude, it's just, it's a game of like ebb and flow. Like it's, it's a, it's a real shitty game, but I love it. <laughs> Bale pitch on the way, there goes the runner, and a swing and a best he struck him out. That time, uh, Whitley took something off and he finished too.
I've always told myself like the last like three months, like my ERA is still zero in the big leagues. <laughs> so that hasn't started yet. The most important pitches haven't been thrown yet. So like, I understand that like everything that I do, like leading up to this point, uh, development wise is going to help me in the future. And the, the fact that I had like experienced all this adversity uh, this year specifically, looking back on it, like it, it couldn't have been a better timing for a really shitty thing to happen. <laughs> eventually make it up to the big leagues <laughs> because uh, I felt like I should have been there in 2018. I feel like I should have been there this year and I feel like I'm kind of like three years late. So like that would be like the biggest thing is like, just, just get to the big leagues, like whatever way, like fucking fight and claw your way up there, like get there, just do it. Like I have my pitching coach here in the fall. He's my pitching coach in AAA. Like I remember him saying something so funny. He was like, look, pitching's really easy. All you gotta do is strike, every, strike everybody out, not walk anybody and not give them any heads and then you have to get out of it. And he was like, oh, he's so quiet. <laughs> I'm the only person making it hard on myself. I have the ball. I have the ability to control where the ball goes and how it moves. Two and two, the pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. And now Forrest Whitley's got 11 strikeouts. Once I like fully grasp that understanding of like that I am in complete control, I think things will work out. So I'm pitching on Saturday, we'll see if it works out. <laughs> One, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Forrest Whitley strikes out the side in the fourth inning. We have a new pitcher for Georgia Gwinnett. That is Cole Uvila, senior righty. Did not pitch that well as a starter. Uh, I had some really bad outings. I mean, I you know, just couldn't really piece it together. I mean, I had flashes where I'd go like nine up, nine down, and then run into some trouble and, you know, inconsistent and specifically struggling with the second time through the order. Although I'd never been a relief pitcher before, it, the Strom doll came to me and was like, this is how he presented it. He's like, how would you like to be the most badass closer in the NAI? And I was like, let's do it. So I moved to the pen for the back half of the season and that specifically um, changed my career for the better. It was the best thing that happened to be specifically for the draft. Uh, my velocity was up, you know, I was like 94 to 96. Um, ended up touching 98 a few times at the NAI World Series. You know, more and more buzz, uh, again, kind of late, very similar to like my sophomore years at Pierce. It was like late buzz. I mean, everybody knew who I was, but I was 24, year old, 24 years old, coming off of Tommy John with a four and a half ERA in the NAI. It's not like the easiest sell to a scouting director, but I just figured, you know, I, don't, I didn't know too many guys who could throw 98 uh, that weren't in professional baseball. So I just figured that was enough uh, to get drafted. The Rangers were definitely the most interested. I knew that from back three years prior to the draft, just because of Derek Tucker, the scout that persuaded me to go to Georgia Gwinnett and had stayed in contact. He even sat me down in the fall and was like, this is what you need to do for us to draft you. And Tucker uh, told me that he submitted me as like a senior sign recommendation in the sixth to the 10th round. He wanted to be with me when I got drafted. So he took, we went golfing on the second day of the draft. Second day of the draft starts at noon, so it's like 12.30. It's the third round, just started. We're on the second hole, and I'm out on the green, and he's like, dude, do you have your phone on you? And I'm like, no, man, I don't have my phone on me. He's like, dude, go get it. And I was like, why? He's like, you never know. And I'm like, Tucker, it's the third round, dude. I'm not, I'm not going that high. And he's like, dude, you never know. Go get your phone. And so to me, I mean, that, that shows that he really believed that I was, you know, he, was what he submitted me as. Second day came and went and it ended. We were at uh, me, Derek Tucker and Adam Scott were all there. Uh, my pitching coach at Georgia State who ended up becoming pretty good friends with Tucker. Um, we're all there and he's like, listen man, like, you know, it's out of my control at this point, you know, as, as much as, you know, I can do and say whatever at the end of the day, you know, I'm just an area scout. Um, but I, you know, you're, you're gonna get drafted tomorrow. Like, don't worry about it. And so that morning I got up, um, I, my girlfriend at the time, fiance now, uh, we got in the car with our dog Lola and had our whole apartment packed and we started driving back to Seattle with, you know, all the expectation I was gonna get called very early in the day and, and be with an organization. And that day was a really long one. And I, I was really I was really confident, but as the day went, my confidence kept dwindling and dwindling. And I remember in the 35th round, I was looking at apartments in Kent um, just to see what the market was, because I was pretty sure for whatever reason, it didn't make much sense. If I hadn't been drafted already, I probably wasn't getting drafted at all. 38th round comes around for the Rangers, and at this point, I'd pretty much figured, well, 
The Rangers were the only team draft me since I hadn't heard from anybody else. 39th round comes around. Uh, the, they took a quarterback from Michigan. Kyle Bodie was in the, he was in Arlington in that draft room that day and he'd kind of been texting me like, how you holding up? And I was just like, I was really honest with him. I was like, it doesn't make any sense to me, man. Like, I don't really know what's going on. It's kind of discouraged again. Um, he's like, well, you never know. You know, we, he's like, you never know. I mean, just hang in there. Like Twitter was on the Marlins who were a couple picks before and I was refreshing seeing the Marlins pick someone and I get a text from Kyle who said, He's like, congrats, you idiot, you're a ranger. And I was like, what? And then by that time, my phone just kind of exploded because then it became public. Rangers select Cole Uvala, right-handed pitcher from Georgia Gwinnett College. Funny part about that day is my dad was at home. He listened or watched every pick through the 39th round. And when the Rangers took Shea Patterson, he was so frustrated and so distraught, he shut off the computer and went for a walk to just cool off. I called him, hey dad, how's it going? And he answered the phone, he was on that walk, and he goes, oh, how you holding up? Because he thought I went undrafted, and I said, well, pretty good, because the, the, the Rangers just drafted me. So, um, pretty emotional moment. It was, you know, awesome. Uh, but yeah, just a wild day, kind of just on theme with my entire career, honestly. Whether I pitch two innings in professional baseball or 2,000, you know, uh, it's something that I'll have forever. It'll be on my resume forever, and it, would be, it's, it's, it was awesome. It's something that uh, I'll, you know, cherish. And it was a really special moment. It was awesome to get to spend it with my girlfriend and now fiance. She was obviously really emotional, um, and it was it was a perfect day. I mean, it was laid out to me really good by my area scout. He's like, listen, you're a 24 year old 40th rounder. I mean, you have to be the best pitcher you can be every time you go out. I mean, it's game seven of the World Series, no matter if you're up four, 14 or down 14. And he's like, those are the, at first, those are the outings you're gonna get. I gave it everything I had and I just embraced that. And it's honestly shaped me to be who I am. I mean, it, once I kind of saw success with that and it's kind of what transitioning into the bullpen did for me from being a starter to a reliever, it just kind of like, you know, I'm not out there pitching with my hair on fire, but you know, I'm damn near. You know, I've had that chip on my shoulder um, since I started and just, it's kind of grown honestly through the whole process.